Hour is late. The time has been spent beautifully. We have had indeed an awesome encounter with God. We have been in a preaching bowl. I am reminded of those who drive thousands of miles to sit in weather of extreme temperatures of 20 degrees and shout for football players who are being hit and bruised and battered. Some legs have been broken, some have to be taken off the fields, and, and yet we are here to praise the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And people can spend thousands of dollars, but yet when it's time to go to church, we have to rush out the door as we have no time for the Savior of the world. Just for a few moments, we have to shout for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I am indeed elated to be here with you at the El Bethel Baptist Church, where the pastor is my friend, Pastor Monroe. I'm none other than your brother, your friend, Pastor Moody from 7950 uh, West Fuquay, Missouri City, where our theme and motto is, uh, where the sun, capital S-O-N, uh, always shine. Jesus is still shining in 2010. Can I get a witness in the house? The time is far spent. The day is at hand. But one day soon and very soon, he that will come shall come and will not tarry, bursting through the clouds of glory and every eye shall see him and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. How is he coming? Riding on a white horse. Yes, I'm not sure if it's a quarter horse I think it's a walking horse for if it's a quarter horse his crown may bounce off his head but I think it's a walking horse and because it's a walking horse the four beat lateral gait allows the crown to sit still as he rides through space for the sake of time I won't even take you to the text. I'll just simply say to you that I am encouraged to empower you that as we move into 2010, that we must have a motto. And the motto that I propose to you tonight is yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. I know you need a text to validate what the man of God has said. And because you need a text, I'll take you to a text. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and the 13th verse. We have noted that Paul is the author, but you need to read it in its entirety for you to get the conclusion of the matter. But for the sake of time, I fast forward the text to the key text that will give you the hope of glory that says to you and me in the midst of 2009 we have faced some temptations we have fallen into sin but the good thing is this is there any hope any validation from the word of God that says to me in 2010 that I can live like Jesus no, every man of God has stood with the theme of yield not to temptation. So I bring it to the conclusion of the matter. Mm, the Bible says it this way, the 13th verse. There have no temptation <laughs> taken you, but such as is common to man. But God uh -huh, is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. 
I'm going to read it one more time. And I'll take a few moments to expound. And I'll sit down. Is that all right? I know you're ready to eat. The breakfast has already been cooked. I can already smell it. Say amen. Amen. The Bible says, There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. The reason that I am proposing to you that we yield not to temptation for yielding is sin is because I believe in the word of God that if we're caught up in sin and we lose our lives sinning, then we will not have a right to the tree of life. What is it to gain the whole world and lose your soul? When we look at the word temptation, it means to entice or to allure. If I can talk to my young ladies for a moment, it's a whole lot of smooth jokers out there. They talking a whole lot of nothing. They blowing in your ear. Shawty, a pretty girl. They are talking to you, but not making any sense. Can I talk to your brothers? Brothers, there's a whole lot of shysty shorties out there. Ah, they looking good, but they caught up with an STD. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is. Yielding is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it just looks so good. Uh, Pastor, I just had to do it just that one time. Uh, let me share this with you. The things the devil does is uh, he tempts you. He comes upon you because he knows your weaknesses. Uh, I'll give it to you quickly. The first thing the devil does is he attacks you physically. She looks good. He looks good. Uh, everything that looks good uh, is not good. Uh, everything glitters uh, is not gold your parents have been telling you don't fall for that joker mama have to have him daddy have to have him you don't have to have anything but Jesus the second thing the devil does is after he says I can't handle you physically because physical attractions don't do anything for you he says I will attack you mentally let me play on your mind but the bible says let this mind be in you that's also in christ jesus and if you study the word of god you will note that the bible says that the the heart is wicked and who can know it the heart is deceitfully wicked and who can know it see the problem with us is we follow our heart sometime without first and foremost following god if our heart is wicked and who can know it in other words we must follow Follow the word of God in Proverbs that says to us what? It says to us that we must follow Jesus Christ. When you look at Proverbs, Proverbs is a book of wisdom. And it is sharing you wisdom. Read through Proverbs and it will guide you through every temptation. Mm -hmm. Very quickly, the third thing that I just want to bring out. The third thing, third thing is after the devil attacks you physically, attacks you mentally, attacks you spiritually. You've been in the church. No, let me say it this way. You've been in the way for a long time. Uh huh. The problem is you've been in the way. That's right, in the way. Not in the right way, not in the narrow path that leads to glory. You've just been in the way. You you didn't get that. Maybe that went over your head. The Bible says that the wheat and the tares grow together. So what the devil says is, I'm slick and I'm smooth. And I know that I have to get them. I have to allure them to temptation. You all have heard the story. Uh, Johnny is caught with the cookie 